वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस डी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग पेपर थर्ड इंग्लिश लिटरेचर ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लैंड दिस मॉड्यूल इज रिटन बाय डॉक्टर जया कपूर दिस इज ऑन वुदरिंग हाइट्स Wuthering Heights was published in 1847. The novel stands at the cusp of the Romantic and Victorian ages and reflects the traits of both, but seems to quite ahead of its times in terms of the treatment of the subject. This could have been one of the reasons why the novel was not very well received by the critics. and readers alike but it slowly gained fame and was established as a classic tale that transcended its age it is the only published novel of emily bronte who died soon after completing the book the book was published later by her sister charlotte bronte after her death we all know that charlotte bronte was also a great novelist and for writing her novels she took a pseudo name a male name that was carrier bell in the same phenomena and with the same belief that as a woman novelist she is not going to be accepted by the society she also took a pen name or a pseudo name one of the ways the novelist achieves the smooth movement of the narrative is by language where each character could be identified by the way they speak from the completely rustic joseph to the slightly better nelly to hereton to kathy and finally the language of lockwood it would amount to an achievement for any novelist and is all the more creditable since it is the first work by a young person through this you can understand the importance and the capabilities of emily bronte she was the sister of charlotte bronte and known one of the bronte's sisters She was born on 30th July 1818 and died on 19th December 1848. She was a novelist as well as a poet. She was a daughter of a clergyman in York, England. Her only novel placed her name in the legends. The complexity of the work confounded the best of the critics of her age and continues to challenge the critics even now. Her poetry was as promising as her novel, but her untimely death meant that we have only a very early glimpse of the mind in the poems she published with her sisters. The novelist Emily Bronte was the daughter of a clergyman patrick bronte from thornton village in yorkshire they were five sisters and one brother their relatively limited social life led to an early literary interest in the children they were deeply influenced by keats shelley walter scott and byron three of the sisters charlotte emily and anne wrote and published a poetry collection under pseudonyms of carrier bell that is charlotte alice bell that is emily and action bell that is anne the volume was not very remarkable except a few pieces mostly by emily charlotte went on to write jane eyre which became very popular and charlotte became a household name the journey was not very easy for emily whose novel was not very well received by the public as well as by the critics due to its unconventional story and even more 
because of the unconventional romance which could not be digested by the Victorian readers. She died soon after the publication of the first edition at the age of 30. The novel slowly gained popularity and stands as a classic today. Emily was a reclusive and private person, so not much is known about her. Her sister's introduction to the second edition is a valuable source of information. In fact, Charlotte Bronte's account of her sister is virtually the only biographical account of any authenticity on the writer. That such a gentle and shy person could conceive a tale with such turbulent emotions and unconventional storyline adds to the enigma of the writer as much as to the myth of the novel. Major thematic topics discussed in this novel are romantic love, brotherly love, love versus hate, revenge, crime and punishment, nature and culture, class structure, good versus evil, chaos and order, selfishness, betrayal, obsession and others. Obsession was also used at motive other than revenge and rebellion. Major symbols are the houses, keys, archetypical characters. Wuthering Heights family tree is something to understand, to understand the novel in a better way. Lintons of Thrush Cross Greenwich and Earnshaws of Wuthering Heights are both old and well established families of the neighborhood. Linton household is more urbane and sophisticated as compared to the Earnshaws at the point the story of the novel begins. Mr. Earnshaw has two children, Hindley and Catherine. A third child had died a few years back. Mr. Arnshaw brings home a destitute boy and he is named Heathcliff after this third child who had died. Hindley marries Frances and they have a child, Hereton. Catherine had fallen in love with Heathcliff but marries Edgar Linton and has a daughter named Catherine but here called Cathy. Heathcliff marries Edgar's sister Isabella and their child is named Linton. Cathy is first married to Linton and then after his death she is betrothed to Hareton. It is remarkable how well crafted the entire story is around the complexities that emerge from these relationships. There is nothing left to chance or incredible unlike Thomas Hardy. Even the way Heathcliff could have earned the wealth when he was away for three years is explained by the way he becomes the master of Wuthering Heights and also thrush cross Greenwich on his return. In fact, the unknown origins of Heathcliff, his unusual appearance and the way he suddenly becomes wealthy creates a sense of mystery around him and deepens his enigmatic character. He is a typical Byronic hero, dark, brooding, fearless, capable of deep passions including both love and hatred. There are three most important aspects of Wuthering Heights. Number one, Heathcliff and Catherine Unshaw are among the most famous fictional couples of all time. In fact, they probably are second only to Romeo and Juliet in this regard. Unlike Shakespeare's lovers who are kept apart by the society in which they live, Catherine and Heathcliff are themselves responsible for their failure to fulfill their love for one another. Their own passionate natures make their union impossible. The second factor is that the novel contains a so-called framing device, which is a story that surrounds the primary narrative and sets it up. 
Lockwood's visit to Wuthering Heights and the supernatural occurrence he witnesses there frame Nellie's narration of the novel's main story. The third important point is that the Wuthering Height being a Gothic novel. Gothic novels focus on the mysterious or supernatural, take place in dark, something exotic setting. All things are there in the novel Wuthering Heights. The double is a frequent feature of the Gothic novel as well in Wuthering Heights, the love of Hatton and Cathy doubles, that of Heathcliff and Catherine, the Linton doubles Edgar, the novel itself consists of two entire stories, each consisting of 17 chapters, the second half of Wuthering Heights doubles the first. Now, if we just go through the plot and the story of the novel at a glance to summarize, the first three chapters of the novel are narrated by Mr. Lockwood as a recollection from his diary several years after the events took place in 1801. Mr. Lockwood narrates his visit to Wuthering Heights and recalls dreaming of a ghostly child trying to come in through the window pane. Nellie, Lockwood's housekeeper, recalls working at the Heights and witnessing Mr. Earnshaw adopting a boy. His daughter Catherine develops a close friendship with Heathcliff, but his son Hindley envies Heathcliff's relationship to their father. After Mr. Earnshaw dies, Hindley returns for the funeral and relegates Heathcliff to servant status. Edgar and Catherine marry and Heathcliff marries Edgar's sister to inherit her money. Catherine dies in childbirth. Edgar's sister also dies after running away from Heathcliff's male treatment and giving birth to Linton. It is now 1802 and Nellie has brought Lockwood up to date with her history. The story continues. Heathcliff succeeds in accomplishing his plans. Edgar and Linton are dead and Cathy is as penniless and dependent as Hayton. When the two cousins fall in love, Heathcliff realizes he is no longer interested in destroying anything. He becomes obsessed with the vision of his beloved Catherine's spirit hovering nearby, waiting for him to join her. Within three days of his vision, Heathcliff dies and is buried according to his wishes alongside Catherine. Local legion claims that their spirits haunt the moors. Hatton and Cathy plan to marry on New Year's Day, moving back to Greenwich and taking Nellie with them. Lockwood returns to London. That is the story and the plot. Many films were made on this story. The novel was turned into several teleseries other than movies, theatre adaptations and musicals. These are mostly attempts to capture the passionate romance of Catherine and Heathcliff at the core with the haunting sense of pain. Catherine and Heathcliff refused to be subdued after the death of Mr. Unshaw. Catherine noted in her jottings that they spent long hours on the moors for which they were often reprimanded. The fascination with the moors could be read as a seeking of proximity with nature, an escape from the brooding darkness of the Wuthering Heights, and also a spirit of rebellion against the authority of Hindley. Catherine's diary entries are the point where the narrative picks up the story of Catherine and Heathcliff. We cannot forget that Catherine's chance stay at Greenwich changes not only her behavior in general, but also her perception of her relationship with Heathcliff. She gets a taste of the other side of life as well and then cannot go back to her earlier mindset. The moment is the turning point in the story and the change is the destiny of the protagonist forever. Heathcliff disappears after Catherine accepts Edgar's proposal and comes back a changed man after three years. 
Catherine not only welcomes him but tries to persuade Eager to befriend him. Isabella falls in love and elopes with him in spite of Catherine's warning that he is a ruthless man. Nelly is bound by her love for Catherine and on several occasions facilitates their meeting, a thing she regrets later. Even after coming back to Wuthering Heights and to Heathcliff, Catherine is unable to find happiness. Her earnings were not only for the love of Heathcliff, but also for the freedom that their escape into the moors offered. Social and cultural trappings damaged the essence of their relationship, whereas their escapes into the moors had brought them close to each other. Catherine confesses to her passionate love for Heathcliff before Nelly. It is this passion that drives her in her continued association with him after he comes back. She knows that he is a ruthless and can go to any extent to hurt and avenge and warns Isabella, but of no use. Heathcliff, on the other hand, is torn between his love for Catherine and his disgust with Edgar whom he sees as a weak and cowardly person, not worthy of a strong-minded girl like Catherine. He is not questioning the love of Edgar. He is only pointing out that Edgar is incapable of deep emotions. It was said by Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights, I quote, If he loved you with all the power of his soul for a whole lifetime, he couldn't love you as much as I do in a single day. Unquote. That is the height of love that he proposes that he possesses for Catherine. After the death of Catherine, Heathcliff struggles to come to terms with her death. He op even opens her grave to look at her. He yearns for her presence around even if it be as a ghost. In the last few days of his life, he suddenly starts spending long hours in the moors and he passes away with a smile of contentment gazing out of the same open window from where Catherine's ghost used to knock. The love is in lifetime and beyond. That is the message being given by the characters. The love never needs is not limited to union. The love is beyond everything. That is the message being given by the novelist. The gothic atmosphere of the novel is enhanced by the constant presence of the spirit of Catherine around Wuthering Heights reported by people on more than one occasion. Catherine's dilemma and her subsequent trauma arise out of the identity crisis that lies in her name. The words also introduce the reader to the two Catherines who move from one name to another and the story develops till Catherine, unsure as the mother's name is inherited by the daughter. The use of the dialects and accents by Emily to demarcate the various narrators of the story is a remarkable quality of the novel. It helps in placing the various narrative patterns of the novel within the comprehension of the reader. Joseph's dialect is the purest, while the narrative voice of Lockwood is clearly a suave, educated and literary language. The ghost of Catherine emerges as another important character. It can be speculated whether the ghost was actually there or Lockwood dreamt of the ghost having slept reading the strange carvings on the window, ledge and the jottings on the books. The novelist does want to introduce an element of the gothic through the reporting of the ghost because after the death of Heathcliff, Nelly tells Lockwood about people reporting of seeing a young couple in the moors. Nelly also told Lockwood about the strange cases of window panes of Wuthering Heights shattering after the death of Heathcliff 
and her interpretation that this could be the presence of the two lovers in the vicinity. This, she reports, is a major reason why the younger couple were going to shift to Greenwich. I quote a paragraph from the book itself. I must stop it, nevertheless, I muttered, knocking my knuckles through the glass and stretching an arm out to seize the importunate branch, instead of which my fingers closed on the fingers of a little ice-cold hand. The intense horror of nightmare came over me. I tried to draw back my arm, but the hand clung to it, and a most melancholy voice sobbed, let me in, let me in. Who are you, I asked, struggling meanwhile to disengage myself. Catherine Linton, it replied shiveringly, unquote. A beautiful narration by the novelist. It evokes that gothic element. It creates that feeling of awe and shiver that she wanted to create. It creates that eternity of love is established. It creates the effect that was much due. The love of Catherine and Heathcliff blossomed in the moors. Catherine experienced complete freedom in the moors and earned for that same freedom till her last breath. The spirit of defiance that ran in both Heathcliff and Catherine was symbolized in the freedom of the moors. I quote from the novel, but it was one of their chief amusements to run away to the moors in the morning and remain there all day. And the after punishment grew a mere thing to laugh at. The curate might set as many chapters as he pleased for Catherine to get by heart. And Joseph might thrash Hathcliff till his arm ached. They forgot everything the minute they were together again. At least the minute they had contrived some naughty plan of revenge. You can compare this love story with Romeo and Juliet or Lila and Majnu. The same things were described in their stories as well. It establishes that the love, it's not always succeeds in union. If they are together for a short while, even then they are contended and try that more and more togetherness should be there. Catherine was buried in the moors as she had decided to be in those open spaces in her last days. Edgar spent long hours in his last few days sitting by Catherine's grave. He too was buried beside her in the same place as he had wished. Hathcliff was not a Christian and had already made arrangements to be buried by Catherine's grave in the same moors where their love had blossomed. On the surface, Wuthering Heights is a love story. Delving deeper, readers find both a symbolic and psychological novel. In fact, Wuthering Heights cannot be easily classified as any particular type of novel. That is the literary strength that Bronte's text possesses. The novel told from multiple points of view is easily read and interpreted from multiple perspectives as well. Like other literary masterpieces, Wuthering Heights has spawned dramatic productions, a musical retelling, movies and even a novel that films in the gaps of Heathcliff's three missing years. Emily Bronte's novel has overcome its initial chilly reception to warm the hearts of romantics and realists worldwide. To sum up, Charlotte Bronte who wrote the introduction of this novel, Wuthering Heights, had some comments to made regarding this book not being received warmly by the readers. She also comments that this book lagged certain parameters which were expected to be in the Victorian fiction. Nevertheless, this novel is a great reading. This presents 
a great love in the hearts of two people who were one it presents a different sort of romance which goes beyond the bodies it presents that money is nothing when compared to love it presents so many things in one place that naturally this novel was liked by so one and can be termed as a classic happy reading thanks for visiting epg patshala